good morning children so in the last class we were discussing about the regulation of the gene expression in that one we were discussed about the lack of run concept so by taking an example okay with respect to the, the presence or absence of the individual that is nothing but switch off and switch on mechanism isn't it so these are all things we were discussed in the last class in this class today let us discuss another important topic that is human genome project okay the question arises what is human genome project it is commonly known as hgp okay hgp or human genome project is a scientific project concerned with the study of base sequences of dna molecules of complete set of chromosome that is commonly as the haploid set okay so how can we define the human genome project or what is the human genome project human genome project is a scientific project concerned with the study of base sequences of dna molecules that is dna molecules of complete set of chromosomes it is common as the haploid set okay and generally they will ask the question human genome project is also known as mega project why okay because the human genome project it was started in 1990 and completed in 2003 so that is for the purpose of the human genome project it took about how many years it's about 13 to 14 years okay so that's why the human genome project is also known as mega project okay so let us start the discussion with respect to the human genome project fine yeah see here so generally when it comes to the human genome project first of all you should know how it will be the entire dna in the haploid set of chromosomes of an organism is called a genome okay so how can you define the genome the entire dna in the haploid set of chromosomes of an organism is called a genome okay in another words we can also say the total number of genes located on a haploid set of chromosomes is also known as genome okay and even the genome refers to the one complete set of genes for the species it is usually found in a haploid set of chromosomes okay and you know very well that in human genome dna is packed in 23 chromosomes okay that is a n okay n is equal to 23 what about the 2n is equal to 46 here we will study okay haploid set so that's why human genome the dna is packed in 23 chromosomes and in the beginning of this chapter only i told you the human genome contains about 3 to 10 to the power of 9 base pairs okay so that is a human genome means so that is a 23 chromosomes the human genome contains about 3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs and as i said the human genome project okay it was began in 1990 that means it was started in the 1990 and completed in 2003 was the first mega project for the sequencing of nucleotides and mapping of all the genes in the human genome okay are you getting see the human genome project was the first mega project of the sequencing okay this is very important the sequencing of nucleotides and mapping of all the genes in human genome okay and see actually who were coordinated this project okay the human genome project was coordinated by us that is united states department of energy and the national institute of health okay with the co i mean the coordination of these two that means the hgp was coordinated by us department of energy and the association of the national institute of the health both they were able to identify the the complete sequence of okay the complete sequence of the genome okay so that's what today and now we are studying easily okay so that's why we come to know how exactly the total number of the genes so 
So what are the day space? So these are all the things we will come to know about by this project. Okay. Yeah. And when it comes to the the I mean the what are the goals of the HGP? Okay, generally we were not simply conducted. We had a great goals. Okay, the we had a great goals of the HGP. So then the question arises, what are the goals of the HGP? Okay, the first one. Okay, identify to identify all the approximately twenty to twenty five thousand genes in human DNA. Okay, what is the first goal of the HGP? Identify all the estimated gene human DNA. It is estimated that that approximately twenty thousand to twenty five thousand genes in human. Okay, in that one only, as I said, what are the goals of the HGP? The first one, identify to identify all approximately whatever the number. It's approximately twenty to twenty five thousand genes in human DNA. The second one. Second one is sequencing of three billion chemical base pairs of the human DNA. Okay, so it is believed and come to know, and I, they are already identified. What are the number? Okay, the number of the base pairs, so that to determine the sequence of all three, all three billion. Okay, you will not believe it. So how many number of? So whatever the chemical bases are present. It's about three billion chemical base pairs are present. Okay, so that uh, one of the goal in this one to determine the sequence of all three billion chemical base pairs. Okay, the next one to store this information in databases so that we can utilize this information for the further research and uh, a future okay future research field. Okay, so that. If we store particularly, so that means what are the particular bases are responsible for the expressions, so that by storing this information can be utilized as for the further studies. Regarding so store to store this information in databases, so that we can access easily in the further days. The next one to improve tools for data analysis. Okay, this is very important. Okay, for the purpose of the analysis, we have to improve the tools so that can we can isolate the particular basis and utilizes for the particular studies also. Okay, next one, transfer. Okay, transfer related technologies to other sectors such as industries. The knowledge. Okay, whatever we get this knowledge from the HGP. So this knowledge can be okay. This knowledge can be transfer related technologies to the other sectors such as the industries. Okay, so that we can utilize this knowledge for the purpose of the other sectors also. Fine. Then the last one. Okay, the last one. The goals of the HGP to address the ethical, legal, and social issues. It is also known as LSI that may arises from the projects. Whenever we start doing any particular project, the first question arises: ethics. Okay, so ethical issues: is it ethical or non-ethical? Then, is it legal or illegal? Okay, then the next one: the social issues. Whatever the problem arises, okay. So you must have heard about. I will give you an example for the. So this. Ethical, legal, and social issues. Whenever they started the production of the test tube babies, there is a human kinds. So that was a question raised. Okay, how it will be? So after the development of that particular a fetus, who will take care? The child after that, whom she or he should call the dad or the mom, isn't it? And how this society they will accept? And is it legally accepted? In future, if somebody may misuse those type of the projects, how it will be? So those are all will be considered as ethical, legal, and social issues. Okay, so that may arises from the project. So these are all the nothing but the goals of the HGP. Okay, human genome project. And the next one, the very important one. 
so after the goals we have to study the methodology how they perform okay what is the methodology they use during this process yeah so i was telling about so during this process the methodology is very important okay so the method when we study about the human genome project methodologies it involves the two major approaches in that one the first one to identify all the genes that expressed as rna referred as expressed sequences tags in short form they are also known as ets are you getting what i'm telling see during the methodology to identify all the genes what are the number of the genes expressed as a rna so that means what are the genes first of all they are responsible for the expression of the particular cat you know for example the particular gene is responsible for expression of the pattern of the head okay and certain gene is responsible for the uh, color of the skin so like that to identify all the genes what are the number the expressed as rna referred as express sequence tags okay so next one the next one is very important one sequence annotation what is the meaning of this see simply sequencing the whole set of genome that contain all the coding and non coding sequences okay and later assigning different regions in the sequence with functions called sequence annotation okay so here only the representation diagrammatic representation given the right side of this slide whenever it comes to the ets how it will be okay and what about the sequence annotation what is the sequence annotation the sequencing whole set of genome containing all the coding and non coding sequence and later assigning in different regions in the sequence with function okay are getting yeah this is very important when when it comes to the human genome project how actually they use as a procedure okay here the procedure is very important okay see the commonly used host for sequencing okay remember so this can be asked for one mask question also the commonly used host for sequencing were bacteria and yeast as vectors okay so what are those one you know you must have heard about bac that is nothing but bacterial artificial chromosome and yac yeast artificial chromosome okay so the commonly used host for sequencing were bacteria and yeast as a vectors they were called bac and yac bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosome okay yeah i was telling about the procedure so after the methodology we have to discuss about the procedure okay so of the uh, observe this structure and the stages okay observe this structure and the stages of the i uh, mean the dna sequence of procedure in hgp so what you can identify yes so this is a step by step mechanism let me to explain okay the fragments were sequenced using automated dna sequences okay the fragments were sequenced using automated dna sequences that worked on the principle of method developed by frederick sanger okay and the sanger is also credited for the developing method for determination of amino acid sequences in protein cells okay so that's the first step isolate the dna from cell then later okay the later convert into random fragments okay the convert into random fragments next cloning host the cloning host that is a, as i said bacteria and yeast using vectors that is example bac and yac for amplification the next step is sequencing of fragments using 
automated DNA sequences. Okay, so that's what I said using Frederick Sanger method. The next one arrange the sequences based on the overlapping regions align of the sequences using computer programs. Okay, so this is actually the procedure. Okay, this is actually the procedure. What are we conduct? Okay, yeah, so let me to tell you once again. So these sequences were then arranged based on the some overlapping regions present in them. Okay, so this required the generation of the overlapping fragments for the sequencing alignment of these sequences were humanly not possible so this is very important so that's why we use this okay so therefore specialized computer based programs were developed okay for the purpose of the alignment of these sequences was not i mean the humanly is not possible that's why the specialized computer based programs were developed for the purpose of alignment okay yeah so here the procedure i was telling about the procedure then these sequences were subsequently annotated that is annotated and were assigned to each chromosome to so annotate means to add the notes to a book or a text giving explanations is known as annotate okay or annotation the phenomena is known as annotation fine yeah i was telling about the name of the scientist the frederick sanger okay the sanger has also developed a method of sequencing of amino acids in proteins okay in his method the sanger has also developed a method of sequencing of amino acids so he proved that the dna is converted to random fragments as there are technical limitations in sequencing very long pieces of dna okay so that hgp was a uh, closely associated with bioinformatics okay so then the question arises what is bioinformatics application of the computer science and information technology to the field of biology and medicine he is known as by informatics okay so nowadays it is a more one of the i mean the rapidly growing branch of the biology also okay yeah and see here in the sequences as i said the sequence of chromosome the first was completed only in may 2006 so that is out of the 24 chromosomes that is 22 chromosomes and xy okay so that is a haploid set of chromosome along with the sexual chromosomes that is 22 is nothing but autosomes and the remaining xy is the sex chromosomes the last sequenced one is chromosome 1 may okay in 2006 are you getting the sequence of chromosome 1 was completed only in may 2006 okay yeah another actually see here the actually very important one another challenging the task was assigning the genetic and physical maps on the genome so this was generated using information on that is PRER that is polymorphism of restriction endonuclease polymorphism of restriction endonuclease recognition sites and some repetitive dna sequences known as micro satellites are you getting what i'm telling the genetic and physical maps on the genome were generated using information on polymorphism of restriction endonucleases recognition sites and some repetitive dna sequences they are also known as micro satellites okay example if you see in the dna sequences there is a sequencing also have been done in bacteria yeast and that is keno habitis elegans it is a free a living non pathogenic nematode and also they identified in drosophila okay 
client arise in Arabidopsis. So the DNA sequences also have been done in bacteria. So is and that is Keno, Keno habitis, Alagans, the Drosophila. So till now I'm telling about. Okay, not only in human beings. Okay, also along with the insects, bacteria, yeast, Drosophila, plants like rice in Arabidopsis. Okay, so this is about the actually the DNA sequencing procedure in HGP. So after this one, we have to discuss about the salient features of the human genome projects. So this is very important. Okay, why we are doing, why we are spending so all this money. Okay, remember the in this information. See, these are all very important. One. Please note down the information promises the revolutionize the a process of finding chromosomal locations for the disease associated sequences and tracing human history okay as i said in the beginning also the human genome is said to be have approximately 3 to 10 to the power of 9 base pairs and the estimated cost of the project would be around 9 billion us dollars so even if the obtained sequences were to be stored in a, a typed form in books and a, if each page of the book contained thousand letters and each book contained the that is a thousand pages okay so then 3300 such books would be required to store the information of the dna sequences from a single human cell okay so that's why I said the human genome project is also known as mega project. Okay, and HGP was closely associated with the rapid development of a, a few area in the biology called bioinformatics. So that why should we how to why should we have to spend all this money? Okay, so then, then we will get the answer because of the salient features. Okay, because of the salient features, we are spending all this money okay so that we have to study the salient features in this question also they can ask for the three mass questions what are the salient features and applications of the hgp like that okay so let us discuss the salient features of the human genome the first one the human genome contains 3164.7 million nucleotide bases okay so you know 1 million is equal to 10 lakhs so, but here the human genome contains how much the mean the nucleotide basis 3164.7 million nucleotide bases okay then the average gene consists of 3000 bases average the gene contains or consists of 3000 bases and the total number of the genes is equal to about 30,000 the total number of the gene is estimated at 30,000 okay and even the largest known human gene being diastrophin at 2.4 million bases they will ask one last question also which is the largest human gene the largest known human gene being diastrophin which containing 2.4 million bases okay are you getting fine yeah and even see till now the 99.9% .9 nucleotide base sequences are same in all the peoples okay are you getting almost all the 99.9% .9 the nucleotide bases are same in all the people only 0.1% that is 3 into 10 to the power of 6 base space difference makes every individual unique so that remaining the 99.99 actually okay 99.9% .9 nucleotide bases are same in all the people okay yeah, this is very important but still when it comes to the function the functions of over 50% of the discovered genes are unknown 
so that we know only about of only 50 percent the functions of the 50 percent genes discovered is unknown okay so that means we know about only half of the percentage the remaining 50 percent should be still it should be discovered fine yeah and the chromosome first has most genes that is 2968 and whereas the y has the fewest genes there is nothing but 231 you must have heard about the when we compare to the x and y chromosome xx chromosome is most powerful than xy chromosome or you can also say compared to the x and y x chromosome is most powerful than y chromosome because of the number also because of the number also okay yeah and less than two percent of the genome codes for protein so out of the whatever the total number of the i mean the genome is present so among those one only less than two percent of the genome codes for the protein synthesis okay so this is very important and finally see when it comes to the I mean a very large portion of the human genome is made up of repeated that is the sequences they are also known as repetitive sequences so these are stretches of the DNA sequences that are repeated many times they have no direct coding functions but they shed light on chromosome structure dynamic and evolution and remember very important one about 1.4 million locations have single base DNA differences they are also called SNPs single nucleotide polymorphism or short form they are also known as SNPs okay and this helps to find the chromosomal locations for disease associated sequences and tracing human history okay so that those can be corrected in the beginning stages not after the expression fine yeah so oh very important one the next topic actually dna fingerprinting but let me to tell you so very important applications of the hgp please note down as i said it helps to that is hgp helps in diagnosing and treatment for genetic diseases so that after the birth we cannot correct all those genetic disorders if we are able to diagnose in the uh, in the beginning stages only so that we can replace the defected genes <coughs> okay yeah and it helps in understanding the functioning of genes and their regulations this is very important applications of the hgp so there are two important applications of the hgp first one is hgp helps in diagnosing and treatment for genetic diseases and the second one is it helps in understanding functioning of genes and their regulations okay so let it be in next class we will continue the dna fingerprinting technology okay so thank you have a nice day